in the wake of the guilty verdict in the Derek Chauvin case, there is new momentum on Capitol Hill to pass police reform. George Floyd Justice in Policing Act passed the House earlier this year, but so far no progress in the Senate. Negotiations there are now underway, and Republican Tim Scott says that he is cautiously optimistic Congress can find a way forward. Governor Baker signed a police reform law here in Massachusetts on New Year's Eve. So how are lawmakers here able to find compromise? WBZ political analyst John Keller says Washington could learn some lessons from local lawmakers. The Floyd family wants it. We're going to fight for everybody. And so does the president. Can't stop here. But can the Chauvin verdict break the impasse in Congress over police reform? The bill is passed. The House has passed a bill named for George Floyd that would ban chokeholds and some no-knock warrants and prohibit racial and religious profiling. But elements like ending qualified immunity for cops, which makes it harder to hold them accountable, have been a non-starter for Senate Republicans who are working on their own bill that focuses on funding better training for police. What can Capitol Hill learn from the recent passage of police reform here on B? Beacon Hill? There were building blocks that were there. State House reporter Katie Lannon covered the police reform saga here and notes that changes in use of force rules and certification standards were in the works before the Floyd murder, giving momentum to the bill. If you've got a lot of parties at the table on something to, to throw the whole thing out and start again, um, seems a lot a lot bigger of a, of a faux pas. But in the end, the lesson of reform here is there's one key factor in breaking the log jam. Public pressure forced a level of willingness to compromise that hadn't been there in the past. Fair? Yeah, I think that's it exactly. And that may help explain why opponents of reform are targeting protesters with a wave of new bills in 35 states, including one signed into law in Florida this week that grants civil immunity to people who hit protesters with their cars. Paula? Hmm. What do you think it's going to take to overcome that kind of backlash, John? Well, uh, let me answer that this way. I think one of the most significant political developments of the past year has been the increasing willingness of major corporations to take sides on hot-button disputes like the debate over police brutality. You know the old saying, Paula, money talks and everything else walks. Well, many of these businesses have apparently decided that their economic future lies in siding with reform, and that's a form of pressure opponents can't legislate away so easily. Easily. Mm. And getting Paula. many, many stakeholders involved seems to have been what made it successful here. John Keller, thanks so much.